<laughs> Before we get into the actual nomenclature, I wanted to actually go over some, some questions on the practice exam that I, I kind of quickly went over, right? So I want to go more in depth. Uh, the main reason why, well, first of all, you might notice that this is an isopropyl group, right? It's a Y shape, it's iso, and then it has three carbons, so it's a propyl. And you're probably wondering, hey, you know, the answer was actually 4-bromo, uh, 3 6 7 trimethyl one octene Why is it octene? Like, where, wh what happened to our isopropyl? Shouldn't we have an isopropyl? Well, no, you shouldn't. Because, uh, let's count it in pink. Let's do this. We realize that our double bond is going to be high priority, so we start counting from here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So that's seven, right? Because you're including the isopropyl group. However, wouldn't it be better if you had this? Six, seven, eight, right? We're going along this one. So wouldn't it be better if we had eight carbons instead of seven? Yeah, it would be better, you know? Um, if you count the isopropyl group, you actually you're actually sacrificing like two carbons. Or you actually say, well, sorry. If you count it uh, this way, then you're sacrificing these two carbons. That could be seven and eight. And I'd rather have eight carbons in my longest chain than seven carbons. And so that's why it's not an isopropyl. It is in fact, you know, an octene right there. So. Well, I mean, let's go over it again, right? Let's go over it again. So we have a 4-bromo. If we count it this way, we will have a 7-heptane. Or, not heptane, but methyl. Sorry. A methyl. And we also have a 3-methyl. Did I draw this correctly? Yes, and then we have a 6-methyl. Okay, so you don't you don't do this, right? You don't have any sevens right there. You're counting in the blue uh, blue molecule. So that would be a what? That would be uh, four bromo comes first because bromo is B, and B comes before M. So four bromo, uh, three, six, seven. There are three of them. No, notice how we went from uh, numerical three, six, seven. It's not six, three, seven, right? It's not out of order, you have to go in order of numerical values as well. So try, because it's 3, uh, methyl. Also, we don't use the, the T in, in try, we don't use the D in die for alphabetical uh, organization. We don't do that. We focus right here. Try methyl. Where is my single bond? My single bond is at the first carbon, 1 octene. So that's how uh, you would get that answer, uh, which is answer choice C. So realize that uh, if I sacrifice the isopropyl, I only have seven carbons, but if I include the carbons inside the isopropyl, you get eight. And I'd rather have eight carbons than seven. Okay, so the main issue in this problem is that, you know, you do your, your whole nomenclature and you look at the answer choices, but none of the, none of them match. Well, none of them match because you failed uh, to, to realize that, well, you may have failed to realize that this could either be a cis or a trans molecule. So usually your cis and trans occurs at the double bond uh, right here, you see. So here's an easy way, right, to realize if something is cis or trans. You have hydrogens here, right? So we have one, two, three bonds. This peak is pointing upwards. That means we have a hydrogen pointing upwards. Let's see, one, two, three. Four, we're gonna have one. This peak is pointing downwards, so we're gonna have a hydrogen pointing downwards. And realize that these two hydrogens are in opposite directions. Uh, they are not both facing upwards, right? They're not facing upwards. So if if one was facing upwards, then the hydrogen would have to face in the same direction. If one is trans, then it would be like this. And that's what we have here. One is upwards and the other one is downwards. So you instinctively know have to, this has to be trans. 
they usually occur at the double bond, right? So look out for that. So we know that our prefix is going to be trans, trans, and let's see here. Um, where do we typically start naming? Well, in this case, we are start we are going to start naming at the uh, double bond, right? So I'm going to start here two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that is seven right there, right? And there's a double bond at three and a methyl group at two, two methyl. And there's also a triple bond, oof, there's a triple bond at five. So that's great, that's super, super fun. So let's see, trans, two methyl, we will say uh, three, hept, hepten, and that is uh, five, y, and e. Now you're probably wondering, hey, how did you get that? Okay, well, first of all, our molecule itself is trans, so we're going to put trans in front of it. And then we're going to put our substituent, which is a 2-methyl after that one. And now we're going to be focusing on what? On the double bond or triple bond, right? So technically the triple bond is going to change the name for the molecule, so it's going to have a, a ein, right? A Y and E sound at the end. But notice that, you know, I didn't put heptane, I didn't put heptine, I put hepten, hepten, that means that there's a double bond right there, and I put a three. But I did not do, I did not do heptine, or hepten, right? I didn't put an E right there because that E is kind of like you're stopping the sentence, right? Instead, we're going to remove the E and put a 5, Y, N, and then put the E. You see that? So, it's like you remove part of the double bond and make room for the triple bond uh, suffix. So, it would be named 3-hepten-5-ein, uh, right? So, trans-2-methyl-3-hepten-5-ein. Um, just be really careful with your E right here. And you know, we're gonna do a lot of practice problems uh, regarding that. Okay, so we're gonna do a lot of practice problems and we're gonna do them quickly, right? So at most we're gonna have three, maybe two molecules per page. All right, so uh, for the first one, uh, you're gonna be, when, whenever you see an alcohol, you're just gonna start counting nearest, right? So most likely I'm gonna start counting one, two, three, okay? One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. This is bad. I don't want to start at the fourth carbon. I want it to be um, on the lowest number. So I'm going to say one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, two, three, four. Hey, but you know, alcohol is going to be on the fourth carbon no matter what, no matter if I go left or right. Well, how come I started going from the right? Well, you know, if I went from the left, um, if I went from the left, you would have one, two, three, four, and five. And this methyl group would be on the fifth carbon. And if I went from the right, I would have one, two, three. The methyl group would be on the third carbon. An easy way if you get confused, you know, which one I should do, is that, you know, you have uh, something on three and you have uh, something on four. You know, three plus four, that gives you what? Seven. And if you go the other way, if you if you went the other way, you have something on one, two, three, four, and you have something on five. That give uh, four plus five gives you nine. And hey, seven is less than nine, so we're gonna go on the seven route. We're gonna do the seven pathway. We are not going to do the nine pathway. So that's a cool trick that you can use, right? <clears throat> so uh, we successfully numbered it. So let's do it. We have a 3-methyl, three 3-methyl, three okay, 3-methyl, and we have a, an alcohol on the fourth carbon, and we have a heptin, so it's going to be heptanol, heptanol, 
Uh, it, this can also be a uh, three methyl heptan four all. I think it looks a lot cleaner on the second one. All right, and for over here on the second one, uh, we have an alcohol right here. So we're gonna start numbering. Now, do I number down or up? Well, I'm going to number upwards because if I number downwards, there's going to be a lot of empty gaps and then I'm going to have a lot of stuff going on here. So if I did that, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I have something on six and eight. If I went the other way, I have something on two, four, you see, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So. Yeah, I'd rather go upwards. It's, it, it keeps everything on the lower carbon. And if you need verification, that's two, four, eight. Let's add this. Eight plus four is, let's see, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's 12 plus two, that's 14. If I went the other way, we have one. Oh, plus one. So this is actually a 15, right? If we went the other way, we have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see, eight plus two is 10, 10 plus six is 16, plus one is 17. Not good, so we don't want that, right? Pretty bad. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see, we have a two, two, eight, two, eight methyl. However, I wanna start with the ethyl group, right? I wanna start with the ethyl group because E comes before M. So we will say what? We will say four, four, ethyl, two, eight, di, that means we have two, and this di does not count for alphabetical organization. Two, eight, di, methyl, dimethyl, where's my, um, my alcohol? It's on the first carbon, right? dimethyl and then what well I mean that's how I would do it but I mean maybe the professor doesn't want that maybe he wants the dimethyl uh, cyclo what is it, octanol octanol and you know that does make sense because obviously you're gonna start counting from like the first carbon right so I mean one one cyclohex, whatever, the one cyclooctanol is kind of redundant. Um, so the professor wants you to say dimethyl cyclooctanol. I don't like this O, but it's what he wants. It's fine. Um, so this whole video is going to be conforming to, to his standards. You know, I have no problem doing that. I just, I'm just letting you guys know in, in advance. Okay, so we're going to start counting over here because it's closer to uh, to alcohol. So three, uh, four, five, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, uh -huh, six, and seven. Okay, so we have a four uh, bromo. My alcohol is on two, and you can say heptanol. You can also say uh, four bromo hept ten two all. That two uh, smudges between the N and the all. All right. Um, so now you may have noticed that we're we're doing a lot of alcohols. I just I don't know. I I, I just feel like it's good practice uh, whenever you see alcohol groups, right? Because uh, one of the main issues that I have and that many people also have is that you know um, what do we do when there's an alcohol and a double bond or a triple bond? So I'm I'm just kind of doing a lot of those practice problems and then we'll do some bicyclical compounds some alkenes alkynes right um, <clears throat> anyways so let's let's get into it uh, we have an alcohol right here so I'm gonna start uh, counting towards it I, I don't care about this right here I don't care it's not an alcohol so I'm not gonna pay attention to it as rapidly so one uh, two three four Five and six, so we know that it's going to be like a hexane, but it has an alcohol, so it's like hexanol, right? Um, what else? We have a four chloro 
Let's write this out for chloro. Um, we also have a 5 uh, cyclopentane. So which one comes first? Hmm, which one comes first? Well, you know, they both have uh, C's, right? But this one has an H, and this one has Y. And H comes before Y. So we will say this is a uh, 4 uh, chloro 5 uh, cyclo pentane, right? Cyclopentane. And now where's my alcohol? Well, it's on the second carbon. And this is a what? Hexanol. So 4 chloro 5 cyclopentane. And what? 2 hexanol. All right. Mm hmm. Okay, so let's go over here. You know, it might uh, be because of the P, right? So that makes more sense, actually. Uh, cyclopentane. I would actually go with that. Um, sorry. So it's most likely because of the P that we, we listed afterwards. All right. Uh, we have two alcohols. So where do I start? Do I start numbering here? No, you don't want to do that because this is a carbon right here. So we will start numbering there. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six right there. Okay. Well, uh, what do we have? We have a four ethyl, ethyl, four ethyl, and then we have two alcohols. So two alcohols, they have the suffix all, right? O L, and then you have two of them, so it's diol. It's diol. So uh, the way you should be thinking about this, right, is, um, let's see, yeah, so you should be thinking like 4-ethyl, uh, now where are my alcohols? Well, one alcohol is on the first carbon, the other one is on the fifth carbon, right? We will say hexane, hexane, and what do we have? Two. Uh, two alcohols, so we say die, we say die all. So the logic behind this was, you know, you can find the 4-ethyl easily, right? But you want to be starting at the carbon that's closest to the alcohol. In this case, it was this carbon right there. Afterwards, you say, you know, um, I have two alcohols, and that's it. So like, where are my alcohols? Well, one is on the first carbon, the other one is on the fifth carbon. Okay, so we have one five, and we gotta say what name is our parent. So this is the hexane, so we put hexane, and then we have two alcohols, so we say diol. Notice that we keep the E right there, we keep it. It is not hexan, it is hexane diol, not hexan. So we keep the E. And if you have trouble remembering that, it's because you know we have a uh, consonant, right? We have a, a a letter that is not a vowel, so two vowels together looks pretty bad. So I'd rather have an e and a d together. You know, that's how I think about it. All right, for this one, um, I'm just gonna tell you this is a seven ring carbon, so it's like um, it's gonna be like a. Uh, it just has seven rings, okay? <laughs> Heptane, yeah, it's tired. All right, so which uh, which alcohol do we start naming? Well, I mean, I'd rather start numbering here and then go this way because I have a lot more substituents to hit compared to uh, going that way, right? Okay, so going upwards, uh, it is what? It is... Hold on. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Why am I wrong? Well, I'm wrong because I failed to consider um, that I want my alcohol to always be on the lowest carbon. And um, if I start this way, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Okay, well, compare that to what I was going to do. I was going to do 
this. I was going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's count this. We have one, we have an alcohol on the first carbon. We have something right there, bromine on the second, isopropyl on the third, alcohol on the fifth. On the blue one, we have what? We have one, four, five, and six. So what does that give me? Let's see. Six plus four is 10, 10 plus five is 15, 15 plus one is 16. Okay, what about this one? Uh, five plus two is what? is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11. Hmm. But no, see, that doesn't work out. No, it, it can't work out because you always want the alcohol on the lowest carbon. I'd rather have a 1,4 alcohol compared to a what? A 1,5. So yeah, while this method does work, like it would be more beneficial for me to go this way, it doesn't work out because of my alcohols. They're more important, therefore they always want to be on the least, uh, the, the lowest carbon. And so the pink one, yes, it does have a lower carbon count. It does have 11 compared to 16. It fails to put my alcohols on the lowest carbon. The blue one, while it may be bigger and may be unfavorable, it puts my alcohols on the lowest carbon, one and four compared to one and five, right? So that's my reasoning. Okay, yeah, I messed up, but hey, you know, that's a learning moment, right? That's a learning moment. So we're gonna be doing the blue pathway. We're gonna be doing the blue pathway. So on the blue route, on the blue route, let's do it in blue so you don't get confused. Uh, we have a uh, five bromo, a five bromo. We have a six uh, isopropyl. You know, if you have uh, kind of like a Y shape, you know, it's pretty safe to say, hey, yeah, that's the isopropyl. I'm not gonna break the cyclo ring just to get you know two more carbons. Um, that's not gonna happen. So uh, we also have a um, one four uh, diol. So let's put this together. Uh, B before I, so five bromo six isopropyl. Uh, one four. Now this is a heptane. Hep heptane. So it's going to be one four heptane with the E diol, right? Actually, no. It's not just heptane, you know, that, that may have worked for this one, but realize that this is a ring. It, we formed a shape, and because it, it is a shape, we are going to say what? We are going to say cyclo, cyclo, heptane, all. Or actually, heptane, diol, all right? So uh, let's kind of like, uh, let's digest it. Okay. So yes, normally you, you would want to start going uh, this way, but uh, in doing so, you would have a 1,5 alcohol, right? Compared to a 1,4 alcohol if you went uh, this way, starting from this carbon and going uh, counterclockwise. So that's not good. I want it to be on the lowest carbon, so 1,4 is better than 1,5. We have a 5-bromo, we have a 6-isopropyl. We put that together, uh, bromo before iso, B before I, so 5-bromo, 6-isopropyl. And then where are my alcohols? Well, my alcohol is on, um, it is on 1 and 4, so we say 1, 4, right? Now we do not say heptane, we say heptanol. However, we formed a shape, right? We formed a shape. It kind of looks like a stop sign, kind of. So it is a cyclical compound. So we say cyclo, because it's a shape, cyclo, heptane with the E, and then diol. So cyclo, heptane, diol. The diol comes from the fact that we have two 
alcohols, so cycloheptane diol. All right. So for this one, uh, where do we start counting? Well, I will start counting towards the left. I will start counting at the left, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That is eight, because if I went from the right, I would have one, two, three, four, five. So instead of having an alcohol on three, I have an alcohol on five, and that's pretty bad. I don't want that. I don't want that. Okay, um, now we start naming the substituents. Uh, we have a 2-methyl, a 5-ethyl, a 6-ethyl, and a 7-methyl. So that is a 2-7-dimethyl. Uh, we have a 5-and-6-diethyl. Uh, uh, Diethyl. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, where, where do we start? Um, where do we start putting together our, our molecules or our substituents? Okay. Well, first of all, first of all, I I don't consider the D right to be in in the alphabet. Well, it is in the alphabet, but we don't use it to have organization. Instead, we ignore the di and consider the M and the E. Okay, so. Which one comes first, E or M? E. So we will say, we will say in blue, that this is a five, six, di. I don't care about the di. Ethyl. I care about the ethyl. Two, seven, di. Don't care about that. Methyl. I do care. Dimethyl. I ran out of room. Dash. Now, where are my alcohols? My alcohols are going to be at three and 4. Okay, now what is my parent chain? My parent chain is going to be octane. So it's an octane. That's an E because we have two alcohols, it's going to be a diol. So we keep the we keep the E, we put a D right there, diol. So what is that? Turns out that it's going to be, yes, octane diol. Yay, I did it. So it's going to be 5, 6, uh, diethyl 27 dimethyl 34 octane diol. So now let's step back and refocus. Let's reevaluate what we just did. Okay, I numbered from the left going towards the right because I'd rather have a 34 alcohol compared to a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6 alcohol. So a 34 is better than a 5, 6 alcohol. Okay, that's how it works. Um, so we numbered it. That means we have a 2 methyl. That's in pink. Uh, we have a 5-ethyl, a 6-ethyl six, six as well, and a 7-methyl. That's a 7, by the way. Okay. So uh, we kind of separate what we have. So we have a 2-7-dimethyl and a 5-6-diethyl. That's one I'm going to be doing on the test. I recommend that you do it as well. You separate what you have and then combine them into the parent later on. So which one comes first, the dimethyl or the diethyl? Well, we don't care about the di. We actually care about the M and the E in methyl and ethyl. So Ethyl has an E, right? That's what you see right here. And that alphabetically comes before the M in methyl. So we're going to put 5,6-dimethyl first. So we have 5,6-dimethyl dash. We're going to put our location for the other substituent. 2,7 dash dimethyl. So now we, we don't have any substituents anymore. We have alcohols and parent. So we will put the location for the alcohol. So it's dash, three, four, dash, then we have the parent. That's octane, right? There, it's only single bond, so it's gonna be octane. Not octane, not octine, it's going to be octane, because that is a single bond. Ane is single bond, okay? So we have octane, we keep the E, and we put a di, because that means two, and then all because all means alcohol so it is two alcohol literally it says eight two alcohol that's what we have if you if you're doubting yourself look at what you wrote for the parent and then try to draw the structure from what you wrote ignore what the structure was on the exam and write out the structure that you just wrote if it looks completely different right then it's probably wrong okay so now we're going to be jumping uh, to kind of a harder one, right? It's, it's always good, you know. 
Um, <clears throat> so of course we're going to start numbering from the alcohol. I'd rather number it from the right, right here. Um, I'm not going to do this, right? That's bad. Don't do that. Instead you have one, two. Now where do I go? Three, do I go up or to the left? Let's see, three, four, five, six, okay. Uh, three, four, five, six. Well, it's six going up and it's six going to the left. But hey, you know, going upwards, I get a double bond and my double bond is pretty important. It's actually more important than a single bond. So I'm gonna include it, you know, in my main chain. I'm gonna include it. It's not gonna wanna be a child. It's gonna be a, a you know, part of the main chain. So we have a, a, a four and then a five and a six right there. <clears throat> so that must mean that we have a three. Let's see, one, two, three. Okay, so three means propane, or propane, so it's gonna be propyl, propyl. So three pro propyl, three propyl. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a, um, a double bond on the four and five carbon, but did you notice something a little particular in this problem? Did you did you notice something? You know, uh, let's let's blow this image up right here. Let's blow this image up. Um, so it's going to be this, right? That's this bond just blown up. Uh, notice something. Notice that over here, you have one, two, three bonds. Carbon wants four bonds, so there's an imaginary or implied H going upwards. Similarly, we have a implied H going downwards. So you have one going upwards, you have one going downwards. Turns out that this means it's trans. Trans means that they're going in opposite directions. So the one on the left, this one, is going downwards, and the one on the right is going upwards, so that's opposite direction. So for sure, my answer choice is gonna have something like trans. If, if you made a parent name, and you look at the answer choices, and it says, you know, cis, trans, or whatever, and all of them have cis and trans, uh, and yours doesn't, you know, I would look at the double bond first and, and put in some implied hydrogens, because most of the time, it's it's gonna be the hydrogens that are cis or trans, so I would do that. Okay, so <clears throat> we realize that this is cis and trans, or this is actually trans, so trans, what else do we have? Um, you know, it looks pretty good, so we're just going to say 3-propyl, there's nothing else for us. 3-propyl. Okay. Now, dang, we are dealing with a double bond and an alcohol. What am I going to do? Well, it's not too bad, actually. It's not too bad. So, first of all, alcohol is super important, so you're going to keep it in the back, right? You're going to keep it in the back. So, like, let's say you have some guests at your house and you're playing video games, right? You're not gonna put the best controller, you're not gonna give it to them, right? You're gonna keep it in the back. Or, for, well, how can I mess this up? No, let's say you, you have a party in your house and you have some alcohol. <laughs> you have some, some drinking alcohol. Um, are you gonna give the best alcohol, you know, to the, to the, to the guest? No, you're gonna keep the alcohol in the back where they can't see it. You have it, but they're, they're not going to know. So we always keep the alcohol in the back of the house because it's really important to us. We don't want to give it out. So we're going to give them kind of like the, um, the cheap drinks, which is going to be, in this case, the double bond. So that's a cheap, cheap drink. It's like a Capri Sun. So you're going to give them the Capri Sun. And the Capri Sun is at four. So it, uh, is it at four, right? And this is a six molecule, so it's going to be hexen, hex n. It is not hexane. <clears throat> when you say hexane, you're saying that it only has single bonds. However, however, we're dealing with double bonds, so it's going to be hexene, right? Hexene. Now you would imagine, oh, you know, you have an e right there. Well, you don't have, you don't have an e, because um, you know, we have to kind of add something else. So you take that E out and replace it with a dash. Okay, so it's hexen. We do this because we need to add our alcohol. You don't want this. You don't want this. Hexen all. That looks so ugly, dude. It looks so ugly. So, so ugly. Right? 
So an E and an O together, they don't look good. It, it hurts for me to write that down. So we have a four hexen, we remove the E, put a dash. Now we're gonna put our alcohol in the back where people can't get it. So our alcohol occurs at what? Carbon two. And then put what? All. So you have a trans, the trans occurs at the double bond right there. Right, you have a three propyl. The double bond, which comes first because uh, you, you want to give the bad drinks to the guest first, right? Double bond is not as good as uh, alcohol, right? So we want to keep the alcohol in the back to ourselves because we really like alcohol. We want to keep it. We're bad hosts. So we say uh, three propyl, four hexen. Not hexene, it's hexen. The N shows that it's already a double bond. The double bond occurs at carbon four. So hexen, replace the E with the dash, put a two because that's where alcohol occurs, and put all, okay? Moving on, this is a lot more uh, uh, simple, right? So this is a alcohol that's coming towards you, that's what the wedge is for. So we will start naming it, or numbering it. We go one, two, three. Four, five, six. All right. So now uh, we mainly say that this is a what? Well, we have a double bond and an alcohol. I'd rather give the double bond first because it's not as good as an alcohol. It's not as tasty. So we say what? We say two. Now, do we have a shape? Yeah, it looks it looks like a diamond. So we say cyclo, cyclo, hexan, right? Hex, sorry. Hex N, that's what I meant to write. E N means that there's a double bond, okay, not A N. A N means that there is a single bond, but we have a double bond, so we use E N. Replace the E with a dash, and where does, that, where does our alcohol occur? Well, it occurs at carbon one. That's a one. Carbon one. And then O L. So that is a two cyclohexen dash one all. Two cyclohexen one all, right? So cyclo comes from the shape. You know, we don't have this one, two, three, four, five, six. We that's six, that's a hexene. But you know, it's not in a shape. It's kind of like a, in a line format. So it's not cyclo. This would be cyclo because it's a shape. Hexen, hexen means double bond. And our alcohol occurs at one, so we put hexen dash one all, right? Not in, it's n. Okay, so these problems are, are pretty simple, right? Uh, normally you would want to start numbering, but in this case, alcohol is the only thing here, so we don't have to number it. You know, um, you could just, if you had a model kit, no matter where you turn it, you're still going to be counting at. Uh, the first carbon so it'd be like alcohol one right there if you put the alcohol over here then I'll be like okay that's one this is like um, four yeah well what I'm trying to say is if it's just alcohol by itself you don't have to name the location it becomes really redundant like yeah obviously we're gonna start counting at the alcohol you don't have to name it out so we have a shape so that's cyclo cyclo what is this uh, hexane yeah cyclohexane Hexan, all. So the AN means that it is only single bonds, which is true. That's a nice hexane, by the way. I'm really proud of myself for that. Really proud. Um, hexane, and then the all comes from the alcohol, obviously. All right, for this one, um, for this one, you still don't have to name it. I mean, you still don't have to number the location for the alcohol. Um, I'll, I'll show you why. Let's just do it uh, quickly now, right? So what is a CH3? Well, CH3 is just a pretentious way to say that it's a methyl, right? That's what a methyl is. It's a CH3. So we start counting. One, two, three, four, five. That's five cyclopentane. And uh, we have a methyl right here, so that's a two methyl. <clears throat> two methyl. And we have, actually we can merge it together. 
cyclopentan. And then what do we have? An alcohol. So 2 methyl cyclopentanol. Okay. Um, whenever you're dealing with like cyclo, um, whenever you're dealing with like rings like this, um, we didn't have to name the location for the alcohol because it was the only thing by itself. However, if we have a methyl group or like a propyl or a butyl or whatever, you still don't have to name the location. You don't have to. However, whenever you have a functional group in the mix, you're going to have to name the, the location for the alcohol. So notice, yeah, is methyl a functional group? No. Is propyl a functional group? Nope. Is ethyl a functional group? Nope. However, is a double bond a functional group? Yes, it is. Is a triple bond a functional group? Yes, it is. If you have an amine, is a, a functional group? Yeah, it is. If you have an al if you have an oxygen in the middle right there, is that a functional group? Yeah, it is. It's a it's an ether. And then you would have to number the location for the alcohol. So if you have a functional group in the mix, then you have to name the um, location for the alcohol. In this case, methyl is not a functional group, so we can just ignore the location for the alcohol and just put 2-methylcyclopentanol, and we'll be fine and dandy. All right, now I'm introducing to you a molecule that has three double bonds and an alcohol. So what is this? You should know that this is a, what, that this is a phenol. It's a phenol. Okay, that's cool. Um, you realize that if we were to get rid of this, this is a benzene, okay? That's a benzene. Um, you know, it, it's pretty easy. It's just, it's just um, three double bonds with, with an alcohol that's a phenol. Uh, what, what would this be? Well, we start counting out one and two to make life easier, so we just say what? This is a 2-methyl phenol. Simple, right? Simple. Cool. Now, um, what would this be right here? Well, let's see, one, let's see, uh, two, three, four, five, and six, right? Six. So, um, how would we name it? We would say two, six, dimethyl, phenol. Phenol with an E, not an O. Okay, so that's two, six, dimethyl, phenol. And what about this one? Hmm, is it, is it one, two? For sure, it's going to be like it's going to be uh, one two. But is it phenol diol or phendiol or that's so weird, right? Not really. Actually, whenever you have two uh, alcohols, it's not going to be a phenol. It's going to be a benzene. It's going to be a benzene. So ben zine with the e and then diol. It looks better. You you know you're not going to say phenol diol. Because you already have an all right there. You're not going to say fendiol. Sounds weird. So whenever you have two alcohols on your um, on your molecule, and the molecule has like three double bonds on it, and it's in a cyclical fashion, you're going to say one, two, or whatever. Benzene diol. It is not. It's no longer phenol. It is a benzene diol. I doubt that this is going to be on your exam, but... I just, I, it wouldn't feel right for me to not mention it, okay? So replay the fat, the past uh, three minutes and it'll be golden to you, all right? For this one, it looks really complicated, but it's not. It's, we start numbering at the closest to the alcohol. So it's one, two, three, or is it one, two? One, two, right? So I'm, I'm gonna start numbering from the from the right. So it's one, two, three. Now is it four or is it four, five, six? Well, I'm gonna go on his nose, then his chin, and then his neck. 
so four, five, six, right? Um, I'm sorry, I just draw the faces uh, to have some fun with it. Sorry, uh, it just keeps me entertained. Um, so three, four, five, six, right? Okay, so we have a lot of things going on on number one. So we really have, we really have, um, if I can remember correctly, it's going to be like one, one, one. That means there are three things attached to the first carbon. Tri, which means three. We do not take tri into the consideration of alphabetical organization. We don't do that. Chloro, which we do consider because of the C. Chloro, trichloro, right? What else? Um, we have a three methyl. So C comes before M, so we say uh, three methyl. Okay, now where's my alcohol? It's on the two. And what's my parent? It's going to be a hexane, but we have an alcohol, so it's going to be hex and all. Hex and all, right? So let's see, one, 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 trichloro, three. Is it? Oh, snap. Oh, snap. It's not. Okay. No, because. <laughs> That's my fault. His hair is actually um, is actually a kind of like a, a methyl group. So if you ever see something like like this, you know, if you ever see something like this, that itself is a methyl group. It's just going out uh, out of the page, or sorry, it's going inside the page. So it's going away from you. So that must mean that we have what? That we have a three, three, is a three, three, dimethyl, then the location of the alcohol, and then the parent. Okay, so that was my fault. You know, I failed to see that his hair was um <laughs> was a methyl group. So of course I wouldn't draw faces on the exam. So yeah. My fault. Uh we start numbering from the alcohol. So one, two, three, four, five, right? Five. We have a four chloro. We have a uh two, three, uh dimethyl. Yep, okay. So now we put this together. C comes before M, so it's a four chloro, chloro, then two, three, dimethyl, dimethyl. Now, um, you know, you could say it's just a. You you could say that it is a um, pentanol. But I like being really specific. I like saying one pentanol. Of course, you can also say, you know, uh, yada, 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 pentanol. You know, it's understood that um, you would uh, start counting at the alcohol. You know, I, I, just, I just really like this notation. It just makes it more specific. But, you know, whatever you like, you can do it. Just make sure that it's correct, right, for the free response or for answer choices. If you see an answer choice and it doesn't look the same as yours, but you know you're correct, uh, change your answer so that it fits the answer key. So if if I had one pentanol and the answer, and the answer key showed pentanol right there and everything's the same, then I'm going to pick pentanol. I'm, I'm going to pick pentanol. And I'm just gonna ignore the one pentanol for my answer. So if you see this on the answer key and you don't see this, well, uh, you know, pick his answer, right? That's that's what I would do. All right. So now we kind of do some simple ones. Uh, for the first one, where do we start counting? Well, I'm gonna start counting next to the halide, right? So uh, we're gonna say one, two, three, four. Five. This uh, two corresponds to this carbon, so one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, so that means we have a pentane. Do you see an alcohol? Nope, so it's not pentanol. Do you see a double bond or triple bond? No, it's just alkane, so it's going to be pentane, right? And it's not cyclo, because we don't have a shape, we have lines. Um, my chlorine is uh, occurring at carbon number one. Since we're dealing with this, that means that this one right here is a substituent. So we have a um, we have a one chloro two methyl C before M, right? So one chloro two methyl. Uh, don't forget your dashes. And um, we don't have any other location, so we don't have a dash. Instead, we're going to put pentane. It's pentane, so we don't have an alcohol, so it's not pentanol. There's no no shape, so it's not cyclo. It's just one chloro two methyl pentane. Very vanilla, very good, very good. Makes me happy. Okay, uh, what else do we have? Uh, let's see. Um, one two three four. One two three four. One. One, two, three, four. Okay, so no matter where I go, left, right, up, or down, I'm gonna get four. So what am I gonna do? Do I start counting at the chlorine or do I start counting at the bromine? Well, if you have a tie between uh, carbon numbers, you know, you're gonna start uh, counting at the, uh, the substituent, the child that has the alphabetical order. So B comes before C, right, bromo, comes before chloro. So I'd rather start at the bromo and finish at the chloro. All right, so let's see, one, two, three, and four. So we have a one bromo, we have a three chloro, we have a two uh, methyl. Do we have anything else? No, so we're not gonna have any more dashes. Do we have a shape? Nope, it's just lines. Okay, so it's not cyclo. So we're just gonna say methyl uh, butane. Butane, right? So it's one bromo, three chloro, um, two methyl butane. All right, we start counting out the alcohol, one, two, and three. So what is that? You know, you could say, you could say one uh, propanol or you could just be uh, like this, propanol, simple. If you wanna get specific, one propanol, okay. We start counting out the alcohol, one, two, three, four, and five. In this case, um, you know, you, you, you do have to list the, the alcohol location because it's not on the first carbon. If you say, um, if you say pentanol, Okay, well, I'm gonna put my alcohol on the first carbon. You have to say, oh, this is two pentanol. So this is going to be, this is going to be what? Uh, two pentanol, two pentanol. If you wanna get fancy like I do, you could do pentan two all. Just put this two uh, between the N and the O-L, but uh, you don't have to do that. Okay, uh, over here, we're gonna start numbering next to the alcohol. So one, two, I mean, you can also do one, two. I just like, I don't know, it's just preference for me. So I go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, always double check. Okay, so we have a two methyl, we have a two methyl. Okay, is there anything else? Like ethyl, propyl, nope. Okay, that's cool. Uh, where's my alcohol? If this was on the uh, first carbon, I wouldn't have to say the location, but it's on the second carbon, so you know I'm gonna have to be specific. So two methyl, two what? Was my parent hexane? So it's gonna be hexen, hexen, all. So yeah, two methyl, two hexanol. That's cool. All right, uh, we start numbering next to the alcohol. So this bond does not count. That that does not count. It's a oxygen bond. So we're looking for carbons, right? Looking for carbons. So we say one, two, uh, three, four. You could do five. I like going upwards. 
uh, 5, right? So this is not connected, by the way. So I drew the bond a little too long. So it's 5. Okay. Well, um, since it's... I mean, do we have to say the location for the alcohol? I mean, you don't have to. It's on the first carbon. Is there a double bond? No. Is there an ester or another functional group? Nope. So you don't have to say the location. Okay, um, so let's see, we have a uh, 4-methyl. Four 4-methyl. Four I mean, I always, I mean, I don't have to, but I like doing it. It just makes me more comfortable, you know. Um, no one can hold it against me. I always put the location anyways for the number one alcohol. So we have a 4-methyl. Um, you can say 1. Um, it's not hexanol, it's pentanol. Pentanol. So it's 4-methyl-1-pentanol. That It just makes me more comfortable, okay? It just makes me more, more comfortable. And if it makes you more comfortable, then do it. I don't see harm in it, right? It's the correct answer anyways. Um, over here, we don't have an alcohol. We only have um, a hexane, a cyclohexane, and a bromine, and a methyl. So what comes first, the methyl or the, or the bromine? Well, uh, I'd rather start at the bromine because B comes before M. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's a 5. So we have a 1 bromo 2 methyl we don't have anything else so no dashes uh, cyclo cyclo hexane alright now notice that we have like a T oh boy what, what starts with T uh, terbutyl right 1 2 3 4 4 means butane it's a T shape well T butyl okay cool all right, but uh, where, where where do we start naming? Where where do we start numbering? I mean, well, you know, I I'd rather start numbering at the tert butyl, simply because it's larger. So you say one. Do I go up or down? One, two, three. One, two, three. It doesn't matter if you go up or down. I like going up. It's my preference. I I go up. Two, three. Four, five. If you went downwards, two, three, two, three, four. Huh. Oh, yeah. It does matter. Sorry. So yeah. Um, going upwards, you get one, two, three. If you go downwards, you get one, two, three, four. And I'd rather have like three bromo than a four bromo. Okay. So yeah, I correct myself. It does matter. It's like eleven o four at night. <laughs> so it's like it does matter if if you go up or down for pentane. Going upwards, you get three bromo. Going downwards, you get four bromo. It's, re it's better to go upwards. And you know, hey, maybe you can uh, do this in different uh, colors on your exam. So try to figure out which path is better, which path is worse with different ink or different uh, color pencils, right? Okay. So we have a one uh, tert. We do not use tert for alphabetical ordering. An easy way to remember this is that anything with a dash, we don't use in the alphabet. So like sec butyl, we don't use sec because sec has a dash, butyl. We don't use tert because tert has a dash, right? So we don't, we don't use tert, we ignore it. And then we use butane. Butane. And then we're going to use uh, the uh, bromo, so three. Bromo, do we have anything else? Nope. So we're going to say cyclo, uh, cyclo with a C, cyclopentane. So cyclopentane. Okay. That was nice. Uh, this one would be, this one would be one, two, three, and four. Going with the other way would be one, two, three, four, five. So it'd be one, four, five. This one is one, three, four, which is better. Um, do you have an alcohol? No, so it's not a phenol, it's a benzene. So you really have one, three, four, try benzene, try chloro, chloro with the L, and then benzene. 
Okay, so what if we have an alcohol that is not attached to two double bonds, or it's not attached to a double bond, but rather it's attached to a triple bond. So how do we name that? Well, of course, you start naming at the first uh, carbon that's attached to the alcohol, so we start naming nearest the alcohol. We say, we say that it is a one, two, and three. If you can't see it, it would be like this. So one, two, and three, okay. So three means that it's going to be a propane, right? But we have a triple bond and then we have an alcohol. So uh, of course, triple bonds are not as good as the alcohol. So we're gonna keep the alcohol in the back and we're gonna give the triple bond to our guest at the party, right? So we're, we are going to say that this triple bond occurs at carbon two, right? Do we have any substituents? No, we don't. So we don't have anything else to do. We have prop, right? Then ein. We drop the E, put a one all. So two propine, one all. It's very similar. Um, let's say that you had the same thing, but you know, we're, we're gonna ignore this um, this bond. So if we have the same thing, we're gonna do two um, propen one all. So it's synonymous, right? If we had a double bond, it'd be two propen one all. If we had a triple bond, it's gonna be two propine one all. Do you see the similarities? That yes, if you didn't have, if you did not have the alcohol, you would have propine. Y N E. If you didn't have the alcohol, you would have propen, propene, sorry, P E N E, right? Uh, but we have the alcohol, so we're going to drop the E and put the one all, that's the location. On the other one, we have an alcohol, so that's going to be um, two propen, one all. So, you know, he, I'll just redraw it. I'm just going to redraw it because, you know, it's kind of confusing. Um, so if you just had um, that right there, right? One, two, three, that's propane, but it's a double bond, so it's propen, propene, sorry, propene. Uh, there is an alcohol occurring at the first carbon, two, three, so it's going to be two, that's where the double bond occurs, two propen, that means double bond, and then the location of the alcohol is on carbon one. For this one, we have a triple bond. It's two propine. Pro, this YN means that it's a triple bond. It occurs at carbon two. There is an alcohol that occurs at carbon one. So two propine, one all, okay? So it's just synony synonymous. What I'm just trying to tell you is, if you have a triple bond and then an alcohol is the same thing, it's the same procedure as a double bond. So, is just with a Y instead of an E. Very simple, right? Very cool. Um, yeah, so we're gonna figure out some more uh, practice examples to give you. You know, I'm thinking about doing some bicyclic compounds, so you might have that in the next second or two. Okay, so uh, you may have noticed right now that I have a, a better audio. It's, it's uh, a new microphone, which is nice. Um, so now we're going to start doing bicyclical compounds and um, we're just going to do a lot of practice problems really quickly. I'm going to show you how to do them. So we're just going to get right into it. Uh, these are going to go really quickly because I don't want to take up too much time, right? So when we start naming bicyclical compounds, we, we start at a bridgehead. So this right here is a bridgehead and that is a bridgehead as well. And then we start numbering towards the largest chain. So I will start here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we, we went around the longest chain to our other bridgehead. And then from the bridgehead right here, the sixth one, we're gonna go back to the first one. So we're gonna go seven, eight, nine, and then here's a tip right here which is a, a C coming out towards you, so that's 10. All right, I did not, I did not go uh, one, two, three, 
four, five. Why? Well, that's a short chain. Let's see, that's one, two, three carbons uh, compared to what? Compared to um, one, two, three, four. So I'd rather go to the four chain than the three chain. So that's why I started counting from the longest chain. All right, now that we have this done, we can say that this is a, um, that this is a 10 carbon, right? Always write down what it is. It's a 10 carbon, so it's a decane. So it's pretty simple. We go by cyclo, because there are no substituents, right? By cyclo bracket, and then we add our, our chain numbers in decreasing order. So I will say one, two, three, four, four, then one, two, three, three, and then one, right here, the, the tip of the, what that's coming out towards you, so that's one. So this is decreasing order right there, all right? Uh, we do not count the bridge heads. We don't say one, two, three, four, five, right? We don't say five, three, one. Uh, we don't count the bridge heads. So be very careful when you're doing that because you don't want to count the uh, bridge heads when you're doing that. Okay, so that's a bicyclo 431. And what do we have? It's a 10 carbon, so we say decane. Okay, so that was a decane. I don't know what that was. So that's cool, whatever, we'll continue. Um, over here on the second one, we are gonna start counting at the bridge head. I usually start at the top. Notice that this is the same thing, one, two, one, two. So it doesn't matter if you go left or right, I like going left. So two, three, four, five, six. Now we go back to one and go up the ladder, seven and eight, right? So that's eight. We have a, oh, there's eight carbons, right? So we have eight carbons. So you should be doing this on the exam, eight carbons, and it is a bicyclo, uh, bicyclo, bicyclo bracket. They say one, two, one, two, right? You see? See here? One, two, two, and then one, two, right? So I usually do the outer rings which is like the sides, and then I go inside the molecule and count the carbons. So we had two carbon chains right here, one, two, and another two on the other side, and then we had two carbons inside the molecule. So it's the bicyclo two, 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 and we have eight carbons, so it's an octane. Eight carbon octane. For the last one, we have a molecule. We're gonna start naming or numbering from uh, the bridge head, so we go here. Do I do one, two, three? Do I do that? Well, I wouldn't do that because it's not the longest chain. Instead, I'm gonna go downwards. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? That's seven. Okay. And it's a seven carbons, seven carbons. So we have bi, cyclo, cyclo bracket how many carbons are in the big chain we have one two three four four of them four of them uh, we have one in the smallest chain that's one and then we don't have any right here this is a straight line there are no carbons there it's just a bridge so zero and there are seven carbons so we say heptane heptane Okay, we do not uh, count the carbon in the bridge head, right? We don't count that. We don't say one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, you know, there are six, so we have six, uh, one, zero. No, you don't do that. You don't count the bridges. You count the carbons that are next to it, okay? So you do not count the bridge head when you're counting the longest chain, right? So. We're going to do a lot more practice problems, but just keep that in mind when you see me do it, okay? For this problem, we're going to start counting at the bridge head. 
One, notice that they're the same ring. It's just a hexane connect connected to another hexane. And therefore, we can count either way. So for this one, I'm just going to count going to the, to the left, right? To the left. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. If you went the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, hold on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it would be the same thing the other way. Um, make sure you're counting these correctly because I mess up a lot. So bicyclo, bicyclo, bracket, what do we have? One, two, three, and four, period. One, two, three, and four, period. Nothing there. No carbon, so it's a zero. And we have 10 carbons. We have 10 carbons. So that is a carbons. Uh, that is a decane. Decane. Okay. Uh, for this one, again, it's going to be the same thing. So you could start here, you could start there. Uh, you could go this way, you could go that way. Doesn't matter. So one, two, three, four, five, six, climb up the ladder, seven. All right, so this one isn't as simple because notice that uh, this is not eight, this is not nine. These are actually um, methyl groups attached to the seventh carbon. So what we have here is that we have seven carbons And on that seventh carbon, there are two methyl groups. So we put seven, seven, uh, dimethyl, dimethyl, and this is a seven carbon, and it's also bicyclic, so we have bicyclo, bracket, one, two, period, one, two, period, one, bracket, no period, and then what? Heptane, right? So that's heptane. Uh, because there are seven carbons, that's a heptane. It's uh, two rings fused together, so it's going to be bicyclo. Uh, our bracket's going to have decreasing order, so two, two, one, not one, two, two, right? So it's not increasing, it's decreasing. There's also uh, two methyl groups on the seventh carbon, so that's a dimethyl, dimethyl. For the last one on this page, this means that it's an implied carbon, so there's a carbon here and there's a carbon there, right? That's important to know. And do I start counting from here, one, or do I, do I start counting from here? And if so, like, where do we start counting? Do we go upwards or downwards? Well, I'd rather start on the right side because the right side is nearest to the isopropyl. So the isopropyl, iso is like a Y shape, right? It's like a Y shape. And this is a propyl because you have three carbons, one, two, and three. So three carbons means propane, and this is an isopropyl. And it's important for you to know that isopropyl is bigger than a methyl, it's bigger than ethyl, right? Because uh, you have three carbons, and this one has two carbons. So three is bigger than two, right? It's bigger than two. So therefore, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna give the highest priority to my isopropyl group. So I want it to be on the lowest number, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have seven carbons all together on the parent chain, seven carbons. Well, two has an isopropyl, And four has a ethyl. And this is also a bicyclo. That's a G, bicyclo, right? So let's put this all together. Um, e comes before I, right, in the alphabet. So we will say, in blue, we will say, this is a four, ethyl, 
two isopropyl. Do I have anything else? Nope. So we're going to go right into bicyclo. Bicyclo. We're going to go downwards. Bracket. All right. So my bracket, which one is going to be the biggest chain? Well, I hope you know that the biggest chain is going to be this one. One, two, three, four. Right? Four. Okay. The smallest one is going to be one. Okay. So what's inside? Nothing. It's zero. It's zero, right? So we will say zero. This is a seven carbon, so it's going to be heptane. Heptane. For this one, I would start numbering on the left one. The left one, because you have a one, two, three, four. This is a one, two, three, right? Do you see that? So on the top, we're going to start numbering from the top, right? So you're going to do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This does not count. Uh, this is not part of the uh, cyclo parent. This is actually a uh, just a propyl, right? And the reason why I started counting from the top is because on number one, we have a methyl group attached to us. So I'd rather have that as a 1-methyl compared to a 6-methyl, because if I started from the bottom, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So a 1-methyl is better than a 6-methyl. Do you understand? And this one has more uh, carbons. This one has more carbons. So 1, 2, 3, 4 compared to 1, 2, and 3. That's why I started going towards the left, not towards the right. All right. So this is a a a nine carbon, nine carbon. Okay. We have a one methyl, one methyl, and we have an eight. What? One, two, three, propyl. Okay, eight propyl. So now we have to figure out which one goes first. Well. Yeah, so I'd rather have a yeah that is an that that is a propyl one two three propyl. Just making sure you know sometimes I think it's an ethyl but it's a propyl one two three. All right, so L M N O P M N O P. Well M comes before P, right? So we will say that this is a M N O P. So as a one methyl. 1 methyl, 8 propyl. Do I have anything else? No. So we go to bicyclo, bicyclo, bracket, say, actually that's an L, bracket. Now we say 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's 4, period, 1, 2, 3, 3, period. How many are inside this bridge? Nothing, so zero. Zero, and that's a nine, so it's a non-ane. 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 Okay, that's a non-ane. Um, okay, so this one is a mess. It's a complete mess. It looks 3D almost. Well, it's important for you to know that this is a, what? That this is a, a bridgehead, and that is also a bridgehead, right? Okay, so we, we will start counting from there. But do I go up or do I go down? Well, you know, I'm. Mm, it's really hard to say sometimes. It really is. Well, let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So do I want one? Two and one, two, three, four, five, six. Or do I want one, two, three, four, five, six? Huh. Look at that. If you went this way first, that would be a two, three, four, five, and six. If I went this way, it would be a two, three, four, five, and six. 
So it doesn't matter actually. It's good to make a pathway. I recommend that you do this in like a lot of ink or a lot of colored pencils, right? Something that's erasable and different colors because uh, no matter where you go, it's gonna be the same uh, answer, right? So for convenience, I'm gonna do two, three, four, five, six. Now I go back to one, go here, that's a seven. Okay, that is a seven. All right, um, so we have a seven carbon. We have a seven carbon. We have something on two. We have something on two. That's a uh, dimethyl. And then we also have something on six, so that's a methyl. But I can just combine these two because they're both methyl methyls. I can say that's a two, two, six, and then one plus two is three, so that's a trimethyl. It's a trimethyl. Do we have anything else? No, so we're going to say bicyclo. Bicyclo bracket. Now here comes the hard part. Uh, which one is going to be the longest chain looking at these carbons? Well, I'm going to say one. Let's do that in, in, in blue, actually. So you don't get confused. That's one, two, and three. So that's a three, period. Uh, how many are in this one? One. Period. And how many are in this are in this bridge? One carbon. So it's a three one one, right? Three one one, and it's a seven carbon. So we say heptane. Heptane. These are pretty easy, self self explanatory. Now this is a mess, and you know you may not get this on the exam, but it's always good. What hap What happens if you have a bicyclo compound with an alcohol? What do we do? That's an, that's an H, by the way. Well, we start at the bridgehead, which is here and here. Now realize that you do not count at the alcohol first. I mean, that's your highest priority, but when you're in a bicyclo compound, you start at the bridgehead no matter what. We do not, I repeat, we do not do one, two. We don't do that. We start at the bridgehead for bicyclo compounds. All right, so I'm starting at the bridgehead. Where am I going to go? Well, I'm going to go towards the longest chain. This is one, two, three, four. That's four right there compared to one, two, and three. So I know for sure I'm going to go to the left, but am I going to start at this carbon or am I going to start at this carbon? Okay, well, uh, let's... Uh, start at the top let's start at the top let's say let's do this in blue let's say that we do one two three four uh, five that's a six right there for this carbon and seven okay so that's seven what happened if i did this going downwards so what if i did one two three four five six, seven, and eight. Well, um, do, you, do you see the problem here? Do you see that? Well, the problem is, the problem is that there's a seven alcohol, wait, let me see, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, that's a six, so that is a six right here for this one seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so I have a seven alcohol being compared to the nine alcohol. Which one am I gonna prefer? I wanna prefer the seven alcohol, not the nine alcohol. Alcohol is very important, it's, it has a high priority. Therefore, even if I can't count at it directly, like I can't start counting at alcohol because we're in a bicyclo compound, even though we can't count it directly, I'm going to keep it on the lowest number possible. So I'm going to keep it on 7 and not 9, right? Because 7 is a lower number than 9. So I'm going to start going um, upwards. So that's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, and 9. So that's 9. We have a 9 carbon. Actually, that's 9, and then this is going to be 10. 
10. So after you complete your outer count, you go inside the molecule and you count how many carbons are inside. In this case, uh, we have a carbon right here on this tip. So that's 10, so that's a 10 carbon. All right, do we have any substituents? Yes, we do. Now, this may look weird, but that's a methyl group. Sometimes it's written like CH3, right? And sometimes it's just drawn out, like that's a methyl, right? It's the same thing as saying CH3. Therefore, we have a methyl group on five and a methyl group on carbon 10. So we have five, 10, dimethyl. Do we have anything else? Yeah, we have an alcohol, but other than that, we don't. So we have bi, cyclo, bracket, what's here, one, two, three, four, four, period, one, two, three, period. How many are inside the bridge? One, one. And that's a 10 carbon, so it's going to be dec. Do I say decane? Well, no, I have an alcohol, so I, I'm going to list it out. I'm going to say dec, you know, seven, uh, ane. You can also write it as, um, not ane, I'm sorry, seven all, decanol. Actually, it's decan seven all. Yeah, so it's decan seven all, right? This can also be written as just seven decanol. If that makes you feel better, then then do it. Just you could say five ten dimethyl bicyclo four three one seven decanol. You can do that, or you can put the seven between decan and all, right? So uh, again, for for this type of problem, just to review it. Uh, Alcohol is really important to us, so we're going to make it have the lowest number possible. We still count at the bridge heads. In this case, it's, it's better to count upwards going to the left than it is going downwards going towards the right. Okay, So if you were to do the downward going right like that, you would have this on number 9. If you went over here, you would have this on number 7. A 7 alcohol is better than a 9 alcohol. So you put these all together. CH3 is also a methyl group, so if you see that, it's actually just a methyl. So it's a 510 dimethyl bicyclo. You uh, name the largest ring, so that's one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three. You have three right there. You, then you go inside, right? One, and that's one right there. And then you say seven decanol. You can also say decan seven all. So now we're gonna be doing these really quickly. Right. What do you see here? Well, I know it's that there's a bridge head right there. There's a bridge head right here. So I'm going to start counting from there. So one, two, three, four, and there's a carbon here. That's five. That's five. So we have a five carbon. Five carbon. We will say that this is a what? Bicyclo bracket. There's one carbon over here and one carbon over there, so it's one, one. Then there's a carbon inside. One, five cyclo, one, 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 pentane. Uh, so it's a bicyclo, one, 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 pentane. Uh, you go right, left when you're doing the bracket. Well, I'm sorry, that's really confusing. Um, the way I do it is that I, I typically go on the right ring right here, so this right side, and then I go over here to this left side, and then after that I go to the what? To the middle. But really it's just uh, because they're all equal, right? So if you have something that is unequal, which you'll see in the next example, you have to do it a different way, which is, you, you get used to it, right? I hope. So this is a, a bridge head. This is also a bridge head, so we will count there. One, it doesn't matter if you went one right there, uh, this is going to be a longer chain, so that's one, two, three, compared to one. So three is better than one. We will say two, three, four, five, and six. Six. So that's a six carbon. We don't have any substituents, so it's just bicyclo, bicyclo, bracket. I want to do the, the biggest ring first, so it's one, two, three, period. Now the smallest one. 
well not the smallest one but like the next biggest is going to be one and then the smallest one which is inside is going to be zero that's a six carbon so it's a hexane 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 over here this is a bridgehead and that's a bridgehead as well half the battle is just knowing which one is a bridgehead and which one isn't and let's see if i go one two three okay what if i did one two three all right so it doesn't matter if i go left or right it's going to be the same so let's do one two three four five uh, six seven that's a carbon by the way i'm really bad at drawing then we're back at one so we go back into the molecule we'll say that this is eight and that's going to be nine so i have a nine carbon nine carbon and do we have any substituents no so we can say that this is a bicyclo bicyclo bracket let's see one two three one two okay so yeah let's see one two three four one two three four yeah hmm so no i was right okay so that's that's comforting so one two three compared to one two yeah so my mistake was that I told you that uh, the left one is going to be the same length as the right side well this is not true that's a carbon and that's another carbon that's two carbons compared to one two and three so three carbons is going to be a lot better than two right it's gonna be a lot better than two okay so Let's see one two three four five six seven right man i'm really bad at drawing jeez louise okay one two three four five six seven yeah i'm right whatever so i'd rather go on the three path than the uh two path so i was correct always make sure you're counting your carbons right so this is a one two three it's on the longest chain the second longest is two then we're going to go inwards that's also two so one two two and over here so that's a nine carbon that's going to be non-ane 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 all right um for the other one what do we have we have we're going to either start counting here or there okay so if i count here i'm going to do one two three and you know, that's a one compared to a one, two, right? So I'd rather go to the left, I'd rather go to the left. So we have one, two, three, four, five, because you have one, two carbons compared to one carbon, right? And we don't want that. Okay, so we have five, we go back to one, we climb the ladder, say that's six, and say that this carbon right here is a seven. So that's a seven. So in total, that is a heptane. So it's a seven carbon, seven carbon, right? And let's see, we can say that this is a bicyclo because there are no substituents. So you could just immediately, immediately go to bicyclo bracket. And the longest one is one, two, right? Two. And then we're gonna go to like, do we go over here? Do we say one? No because I want to go in decreasing order. Notice that notice that there is a carbon here and a carbon there, so that's two carbons. So therefore I'm gonna say two, period, and then one. Yeah, so sometimes uh, sometimes the longest chain might be inside the, the molecule. So you're gonna say that's the longest chain, you're gonna put it first in the bracket. Notice that the smallest one is not inside the chain, but rather it's over here. You know, so it really, it truly does depend on um, the decreasing order. So that's like the main thing you gotta be looking out for. It doesn't matter if you got it from outside or inside, you just gotta put the longest chain first, second longest chain, and then the smallest chain last, all right? And you might have more than three substituents, or not substituents, but three chains. It might be like four of these or seven. So just keep that in mind. That's a seven carbon chain, so that's a heptane. It's a heptane. So now we will be introducing substituents formally. Um, notice that I'm going to be focusing on this part 
everything else, like this one, is going to be a substituent. When you see something inside a molecule, you're like, oh, you know, it's a bicyclo compound. Uh, that's going to be the main thing. So that's the main parent chain. Everything else is a substituent. What we're being compared to, however, notice that uh, we're going to be starting uh, counting. We're, we're going to start counting at this part or this part. So the real question is, do I start counting, you know, like, wh where do I start counting? So we're, we're, we're comparing a methyl group and an ethyl group. So which one is going to have more priority? Well, it's going to be the ethyl group. It's the ethyl group because the letter E comes before M, right? So... Uh, if anything, if we're going to be really close to it, so we're going to start counting here, one. Immediately, I'm not going to go, oh, you know, two, right? No, we're going to go over here, two for this one, and then three, four, five, six. It is not, it is not one, two, three, because then you're saying that your methyl group has a higher priority than an ethyl group, which is not true. So don't do that. Don't do that. All right. So we said that uh, ethyl is going to have a more priority, right? So that's six. We go back to one. That's going to be seven, and then eight, right? Okay. So that's an eight carbon. Eight carbon, right there. And we have a two ethyl. A three methyl. We have nothing else, so we go to bicyclo. Bracket. Let's see, uh, which one is going to be the longest one? So one, two, three. Okay, that's three. Compared to what? Compared to the other one, one, two. So I'd rather have a three leading than a two. So I'm going to say three. I'm going to say three right there. So. Well, let's double check. Um, no, okay, so always double check, always. So my mistake is that I did one, two, three. I counted a bridge carbon. Always double check your work, always. So we don't count bridge carbons. Instead, we count the carbons next to it. So we say one, two. The other one, the other one will be one, two. So they're both equal. So that's going to be 2 versus 2. So 2, 2, let's see, 1 and 2 in the center. That's another 2 right there. So it's a 2-ethyl, 3-methyl, bicyclo, 2, 2, 2. We have 8 carbon, so that's a octane. Octane. Again, I cannot stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough. Do not consider your bridge heads. Don't consider this when you're doing this right here, okay? Don't do that. Right, now, for the other one, uh, it doesn't matter where we start. It's a 1, 2, and then 1, 2. So just take your pick, really. Just pretty simple, right? Uh, I like starting at the top. So 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, and 6. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be the same thing. So we have a, um, we have a 4 carbon molecule wait hold on let me see one no it's not four carbon six six carbon so that's six hexane six carbon so that is a what it is going to be a one four dimethyl dimethyl do we have anything else no so it's just bicyclo bicyclo let's see two that comes from here Two, that comes from here, and zero because there's nothing here, so zero right there, and there are six carbons, so it's a hexane. What if I asked you to draw this out? Could you do it? I hope so. Well, let's go through this log uh, logically. So it's a bicyclo. That means that two things are going to be fused together. Two molecules are going to be fused together. In total, there are going to be eight carbons, and my sides right here are going to consist of two carbons together. So if anything, I know how big my sides should be. So that's one carbon, that's two carbons. That's one carbon, that's two carbons. Okay, so we got that down. 
right? But now we need to add, like, kind of like the foundation for the molecule. So how do I do that? Well, I want to link these together. So somehow I'm going to do this, right? Going to do that. Do that as well. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's actually write this down. So that's one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, four, five, and six. Okay, so the problem is, you know, how am I going to make an octane out of this? So this is my second side, and this is my second side as well. Okay, but how do I ignore this? How do I ignore that? Well, we ignore it by converting it into a bridge head. So what if we connected it to the other side? And what if I add two carbons while I'm, while, while I'm doing it, right? So let's do that. Let's do one carbon, two carbons, boom, right? So this means that um, we're going to start counting. Let's pretend that this didn't exist, right? Let's pretend that that didn't exist and we have to name it. We're going to start counting. Let's say here, one. Two. Uh, let's do it in a different color. Let's do it in um, and, and, and blue. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six. We're back at one. This is seven and then eight. Okay, so that's eight. And yeah, that looks pretty good. We could have gone the other way because, you know, we have one, two carbons not connected to the bridge head on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have one, two carbons that are not connected to the bridge head. So you could have gone left, you could have gone right. It's fine. Okay, it's cool. And so we will say bicyclo because it's fused, bicyclo. Bracket, let's see, one, two, mm -hmm. two. Okay, let's go over here, one, two. Let's go inside, that's one, two, and then there are eight carbons, so that's an octane. That's an octane. Okay, so all I did was I realized that, hey, my sides, they're going to have to be two, two. So I just drew a straight line. That's one, two, one, two. And then I have to connect these somehow, so I did that, did that as well. And then to ignore this... Uh, carbon, these two carbons, I just make that into a bridge head because we don't consider them when we're naming them. And so that's seven, eight. So uh, just take your time. If, if that's on an exam, I don't know. Just take your time and um, just think about it logically. But what if I asked you to do this? What if I asked you to do a uh, one, four, one, four dipropyl? Dipropyl bicyclo 2 2 octane well i mean that's pretty trivial now because uh this is the first carbon all we have to do is just do one two three and then over here we say one two three you see one two three so that's propyl and there's two of them that's one four dipropyl bicyclo 2 2 2 octane very fun to say so maybe if you feel comfortable Actually, this is the preferred way to do it. Just write out your base, write this out first. And then afterwards, just fill this in, right? Because that's just, you're adding something to the, you, you made your house, right? Now you're just gonna be adding furniture. You don't put the furniture right first and then build a house around it. That's insanity, don't, don't ever do that. So write your base first, right? And then add your, your substituents. For this one, it looks really complicated, but it's not. This is a bridgehead, and this is a bridgehead as well. We always go towards the longest chain. This is a one, two, three carbons. This is just one and two. And this is a face that I made on the fly. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was, that was pretty funny though. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're going to start at this carbon, because this is the longest side right here, and this is the longest chain. So that's a 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, uh, 7. Okay, so overall it's a, it's a um, heptane, okay, so it's 7 carbons, 7 carbons, alright, 7 carbons, and, well, 
we already have um, our substituents. We have a 2 isopropyl. That's a Y shape, so it's iso. Then we have a 1, 2, and 3, so it's propyl, so it's uh, isopropyl. So it's a 2 isopropyl. Okay, and we have a 3 ethyl. Ethyl. Uh, we have a 5 ethyl as well. 5, 5. Uh, that's an ethyl. And we have a 7 bromo. Okay, so now we put these together. Oh, this is also bicyclo. Okay, so we put this together. Uh, we have two ethyls. Do I put that first? No. Uh, bromo is a, a B. So B comes before I, it comes before E. So we say 7 uh, bromo. We have a 3, 5 diethyl. Right? Diethyl. Uh, ethyl comes before iso because E before I, right, in the alphabet. So 3,5-diethyl, uh, 2 isopropyl. Do we have any other substituents? No. Okay, so isopropyl, we put that uh, bicyclo next to it. Bracket, uh, let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, so that's 3 right there. 3. And we have a 1. 2, so that's 2 right there. We do not consider the bridgehead carbons. We don't do that. So 2, and what's the middle? 0. There are no carbons there, so that's 0, period, 0. And there are 7 carbons, so we say that this is a heptane. And therefore, you successfully, um, you successfully named a 7-bromo uh, a, a 3,5-diethyl-2-isopropyl bicyclo 320-heptane. And basically, you mastered uh, bicyclo compounds. So hey, congratulations. You know, we're going to do some, um, some alkenes and alkynes. And from there, you, you should be fine on nomenclature, I hope. So let's, let's keep going. We will now begin the double bonds, right? The double bond practice problems. Whenever you see a double bond and it's just by itself, you typically start numbering at the double bond. So for example, on number one, we have a double bond right here that is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If you can't see that, I'll do it. So here's this bond right there and there would be a bond right here and another one. So one, two, three, that's one, two, three. You see that? There's another carbon right there. Okay, so now that you see that, we have a two methyl, a two methyl. Do we have anything else? Well, we have a double bond, and so I'm gonna indicate that double bond. I mean, you don't have to, you could just say uh, heptene, right? But I like being a little bit more specific if it's free response, maybe do both methods, right? So he can't mark you wrong because technically you're right, right? So you could say 2-methyl uh, heptene, which I think is how he likes it, or and 2-methyl hep2-ene, right? So those are both uh, correct. Maybe write them both down, right? If you have that on a free response. Just be very careful, play it safe. Okay, uh, let's do this cyclo. Let's do this. So where do I start counting? Do I start counting at, you know, one, two, three? You know, I think that's right. It looks pretty good. Um, actually, no, you, you want to start counting at the double bond, right? Uh, do I start counting one, two, three, four? No, because then I would have a 6-methyl, six and you know, I, I'd rather have that as a 3-methyl, um, you know? So I'm going to count going upwards, so that's 1, 2. Also, don't make the mistake, like, don't go too quickly. Don't go 1, 2. Like, really, you know? You got to include the other bond, the other carbon in the double bond. So if you, if you go this path, it has to be upwards. You cannot do this. Don't do that, okay? So it's it's one, two, three, four, 
five, six. So we have a three methyl, a three methyl. Uh, we have a shape, so that's cyclo. Uh, there are six carbons in that shape, so that is a cyclohexane, but uh, it's not an ane. Ane is for uh, single bonds or simple alkanes, but we're dealing with an alkene, right? This is a double bond, so it's an ene. Instead of hexane, we're going to have hexene. So hex, one, ene. Or you can say three methyl cyclo hexene. All right? You can just say that. Um, which one do I start counting first? Uh, do I start counting this way? Uh, do I? Yeah, I do. I do start counting that way because, again, a double bond is more important than halides. Halides include uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, right? Um, also, if these are substituents, let's just make this a quick lesson. That's called a fluoro. A um, fluoro. So you have like two fluoro, you know? You can have like two uh, chloro, you have three bromo. These are just examples. And then you can have like something, these are random numbers too. Let's do four uh, iodo, right? So those are, uh, if you ever see the halides as substituents, as uh, children like this, you know, if this were an uh, iodine, this would be like a four iodo, right? If this were a fluorine, it would be a four fluoro. If it were bromine, four bromo. If it were chlorine, which it is, it would be a four chlorine or chloro. Sorry, four chloro. Okay. So now uh, that was kind of like a crash course on uh, halides, right? Okay. Uh, so we have a four chloro. Four chloro. Uh, do we have anything else? Is this a shape? I don't see a pentagon. So no, it's not cyclo. We're just going to put what? You can put uh, butene. Or you can put for uh, chloro but uh, one ene. We number the double bond on the smallest carbon, not the largest carbon, but the smallest carbon. So I'm not going to have two ene, right? Two ene is this. That's wrong. We have a one ene, or simply a four chloro butene. Now for the, not the last one, but like for the last one on this page, I want you to write out the molecule for 4-ethyl-2-methyl-hex-2-ene. Okay, so now that you had enough time to do it, well, we could just write it out. So uh, hexene, well hex means six, and I don't see a cyclo, so I'm not going to be drawing a shape, right? I'm just going to be doing lines. So hex means six, we will have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. En means that there's a double bond somewhere, and we have a double bond on the second carbon. So let's see, one, two, let's do it in different colors so it pops out. That's, an, uh, that's a two double bond, or a two en, if you could say that, two en, all right. Then we have a methyl group. And notice that I'm going this way, okay? I'm going that way because it makes more sense logically. I'm not going to say, oh, you know, 4-ethyl and then draw out like an ethyl group, right? Doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, lay your house down and then put the furniture. So the house is going to be the parent and the parent chain. And then the furniture, you can say, is like substituents, children, etc. So we go from right to left. Uh, we have a 2-ene. We have a hex hexene, right? And then we're going to have a 2-methyl. So 1, 2. Here's a methyl group right there. All right. Then we're going to have a 4-ethyl. So 3, 4, right? That's one carbon, two carbons. So 1, 2, that's an ethyl. And hey, there you have it. Turns out that that is a 4-ethyl, 2-methyl, hex, 2-ene. Not complicated. Just go slowly. Go from right to left. You'll be fine. Going on the first problem, uh, we start at the double bond, so that is a first carbon, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So eight carbons all together. That's eight carbons. We have a chloro on the first carbon, so we could say one chloro 
chloro, anything else? Oh, wait, there's a double bond, right? Okay, so if, uh, one chloro, it's on the first carbon, so you can either omit the number one, you could just say one chloro octene, and you know, that's pretty, pretty, you know, um, pretty ugly. I don't, I don't like it like that. Um, or uh, play it safe and just do this, right? You could do that. And personally, I highly recommend that you do this, like super recommend that you do that. It just, you know, it looks um, more specific. You can even do this. And that looks even better. So three ways, you know, whichever is your uh, pick, you know. All right, so over here we have two double bonds. Which one do we number first? Let's see, one, two, three, okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. Mm, you know, I'd rather have a three een than a four een, right? So that's one, two, three, compared to one, two, three, four. Which one am, which path am I gonna take? Well, obviously I'm gonna take the one, two, three path, not the one, two, three, four. You know, I'd rather have a shorter um, carbon number for my double bonds. So that's a four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And hey, here's something a little special. Here's something uh, a little special right here. Usually this occurs at double bonds, right? Um, it doesn't uh, typically occur at triple bonds because triple bonds, they tend to be linear. They don't really curve or anything, right? Uh, double bonds, however, can curve as you're, as you're seeing right here. All right, so uh, what's special? Well, what's special is, is that uh, notice that if I were to draw my implied hydrogens, because, you know, uh, remember that carbon, uh, it wants four bonds. Right here you have one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three, three bonds. Where is the fourth bond? Well, it's a hydrogen. Now, is that hydrogen going up or down? Notice that we are going upwards up this uh, mountain, right, up this peak. And so if we're going upwards, hydrogen has to go upwards as well. And this is still upwards, so it's going to be up, okay? You know, uh, hydrogen's right here. This is a down peak, so it's going to be downwards, for example, okay? Um, over here, our corners, right? So really, the corners have to be pointing upwards. Over in this double bond, the corners are pointing downwards, so we put an H. And this corner is pointing downwards as well, so that's an H. Now, uh, we're going to be focusing on this one. Are the hydrogens in the same direction? Yes, okay. Are the hydrogens in the same direction over here? They're both going upwards. So yes, they are in the same direction. Therefore, this is a cis. This is a cis means the same, same direction. Up, up, down, down, not up, down, okay? So that's a cis, cis, all right? So what do we have? We have, oh, we have two double bonds. So how am I gonna format that? Well, there's something very special. So first you put cis, then you put the carbon parent name so it's, it's going to be nonane, right? But we have two double bonds, so it's going to be like nonene. So it's non, right? And then you want to you want to put the ene, but here, here's something special. Dash, right? We have a three, five, diene, right? Diene. Now notice something. We have a di. Whenever you see ene, you think of double bond, and when you see di, you think of two. So this tells me that I have two double bonds. Now where are those two double bonds? Well, they occur at carbon three, and they occur at carbon four. We do not say, we do not say three, four, five, six, because then you're saying, you know, there's a double bond right here, there's a double bond right there, and yeah, see? That's not good, don't say that because you're, you, that's impossible, okay? Like, that's, no. What, eh. Maybe it's not impossible, but like, it's not good, okay? Let's see, double bond, double bond. Mm, I don't know, doesn't seem good. 
So we just say, you know, this is the, the smallest carbon right here, number three. Three is smaller than four, so we're gonna say three. And then five is smaller than six, so we're gonna say five because it's smaller, right? So let's digest it. Diene means I have a double bond somewhere, but di is two, so that means two double bonds. This occurs at carbon three and carbon five, all right? And we have a nonine, or a non, right, N-O-N, that means nine, so my parent chain is gonna have nine carbons, and it has to be cis, all right? So maybe you gotta pay attention to this first, because you, you have to realize your, your double bonds have to be in like a special configuration for it to be cis. All right, moving on, moving on, um, we have what? We have this one, so let's go to green, or blue. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's five. Let's go the other way. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's five, five, no matter what. So it doesn't matter where you count, right? Doesn't matter. So uh, let's count this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That means it's a decane. But, um, you know, it's, it's a decane, but it has a double bond, so it's like decane. Um, maybe it's not required, but I, I want you to see something. I want you to see um, that this right here is trans. It's trans because we have a peak going upwards right here. So that's an H. And then we have a peak going downwards. That's an H. It's an H right there. So we have one hydrogen going upwards, we have the other hydrogen going downwards. That means that they are trans. Trans is opposite. That's up, down. Down is not the same thing as up. So they're opposite, they're, they're trans. And so you can have an optional trans, trans uh, five decane, right? Or you can have a trans dec. 5 in right? or if this is an answer choice and you don't see trans you could just do you know five or deck 5 in right if you don't see trans like maybe he doesn't want you to see it whichever you don't even have to write it down just realize that hey if there's an answer choice that has cis or trans look immediately at the double bond and put your hydrogens and see if that works out all right so this is 5-bromodecene, uh, that's a C. It's a really bad C, but that's a 5-bromodec-5-ene, okay? So I have an ene, that means I need a double bond. It's at the fifth carbon, but how many carbons do I have? Well, I have 10 carbons. I'm gonna have 10 carbons, right? That's what dec means. And uh, we also have a bromo, a bromine at the fifth carbon. So let's draw this out. We have a 10 carbon molecule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so that's 10, right? And we have a double bond on the fifth carbon. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five. So it's right here. That's five. Okay, and we also have a bromine on the fifth carbon. So we're gonna have it like that. Okay, so that's five bromo deck five ene. Deck means 10. We have a double bond on the fifth carbon, yep. And there's also a bromine on the fifth carbon. So that's how you do that problem. So now for the last few questions on double bonds, we're gonna be dealing with uh, writing the structure out uh, from the names. So. I uh, have a, an oct, right? So my eyes instinctively saw oct, that means eight. It's not cyclo, so I'm not dealing with shapes. So one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, eight, there's an ene at the fourth carbon. So one, two, three, four, right here. Okay, oh, that, let's redo that bond. All right, so there's a, a double bond right there. All right, and then there's gonna be a ethyl bond or an ethyl substituent at the fourth carbon. So one, two, three, four, 
one, two. So one, two, that's an ethyl. And so we have four ethyl oct four en, right? Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now we move on to cyclooctene. So we're dealing with a shape because I see cyclo, and it's eight because oct. And we have a double bond because en. So cyclooctene, let's see if I could draw an octagon. So one, two, three, uh, four, uh, five, uh, six, seven, eight. Ooh, I'm really bad at this, but okay. So let's say you made a perfect octagon, just say en, right? So cyclooctene. You can say that. Oh, of course your octagon would, you know, be really nice, not like mine. So, <laughs> uh, we have a five bromo hept one three five triene. That's an H, by the way. So five bromo hept one three five triene. Well, we're not dealing with a the shape. There's no cyclo. Uh, we have seven because hept is seven. All right. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. Now, we have a double bond, but not only that, we have three double bonds because of tri, right? So there are three double bonds. And these, du uh, these three double bonds occur at carbon one. So right here, let's say that this is one. They occur at carbon three, so two, three. And they occur at carbon five, so one, four, five, right? So right there. And on the fifth carbon, it's gonna have a bromo or a bromine. One, two, three, four, five, so that's eight bromine. And there you have it, that's 5 bromo hept 1, 3, 5 triene, or 5, 6, 7, yes, okay. Now we have a non 1, N, 7, ein. So that's really weird, right? Well, it's a, you know, it's foreshadowing for a, for a triple bonds, you know, just between you and me, there's going to be triple bonds in the next couple of minutes, okay? So just you wait. Uh, so non means I have 9, Right, I have nine carbons, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's also no shapes because, of course, this is a non, right? Or, I'm sorry, this is not cyclo, it's just simple. Okay, so let's see here, um, let's see. There's a triple bond, that's what the, that's uh, the ion part. The triple bond occur at carbon seven. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. That's that's a triple bond. And then we have a double bond at carbon one. So one right there. So notice that the triple bond uh, was in the back, right? So triple bond, we, whenever you name this, um, you, are, you are considering that the triple bond is going to take importance right over the name and um, you're gonna have the double bond out in the front so if I if this were not here I would say okay well uh, I'm gonna count from the double bond first because technically a, a double bond that's outside is more important than a triple bond that is inside and um, let me write this down for this one has more importance. Importance. Can't spell importance when it's at the end. Okay, and this has less importance when it's internal. Internal means that, you know, it's between uh, a carbon, right? Carbon and carbon is between that, so it's internal. And it's not as important as a double bond. However, there are other cases where uh, a double bond is less important than a triple bond, but that gets really specific, right? So we're gonna count here, that's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I have nine, right? Am I gonna put one N non? One N non? Well, no, you know, I, I made the mistake of telling you that you should in the last video. I'm really sorry. I hope that you can forgive me. Uh, that's not how you do it. I was mistaken. I learned from that. So, and we don't say that. We say non, one, n, and hey, you know, let's say we're at a party, right? And, um, you know, 
we're giving out drinks like Capri Sun and this triple bond is a really good Capri Sun that we really love and I don't like the guests I want them to go away they've been here for six hours I want them to go home okay so I'm gonna give them the really bad flavor Capri Suns right everybody knows Pacific Cooler Capri Sun is good it is the best we stand Pacific Cooler all right so we're gonna keep the Pacific Cooler out in the back right out in the back where it's safe with us and we're gonna give them like I don't know cherry blast or something right no one likes that so we're gonna give them the uh, double bond because it's not as good and we're gonna keep the the triple bond in the back so we have non one n and we have a we're gonna have the triple bond in the back so non one n we don't have the e because if we had an e and then a seven it looks bad right so instead we're gonna drop the e and replace with a hyphen a dash and then seven ein so that's non one n seven ein right so keep the triple bond in the back and the double bond in the front for these simple molecules you typically start uh, numbering at the triple bond let us do that in a nice green color. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, and nine. So it's going to be uh, nonine, not or nonine, or you can say non uh, one ine, right? Okay, uh, whichever one is closest to the triple bond, we start numbering from that side. So that's one, two, three, four, right? Four. All right. We also have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'd rather do four. So one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, nope. Sorry. Don't do that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ten. Therefore, we have a deck. Deck four, ein. Right. So that's deck four, ein. Which one is closer? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Right, four. And um, let's make it a little bit more interesting, actually. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. So let's do this. So how do I count that? Hmm. Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine nine of them right there so that's nine carbons and we have a triple bond occurring at the fourth carbon and there's a two methyl so that's two uh, methyl two methyl there is a double bond at the four so we could say or no triple bond at the four one so we have a non ine right you can also say two methyl non four ein so just uh, bring this four put it between the non and the ein so here's an interesting one what happens if you have two triple bonds oh man do i do i start counting uh here 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 or here like that do i start doing that well i don't because if i did that we're losing a triple bond and hey triple bonds are really important right of course, alcohols are more important than triple bonds. So, you know, I'd rather um, start counting a line that includes both triple bonds. So do I count like one, two, three, four, and five? Or do I count like this? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? Well, which one? Let's do a, a pink path. So let's do one, two, three, four, five. Well, hey, you know, this propyl group, one, two, and three, that's propyl. It's on a, a third carbon, and on the pink path, it's on the fifth carbon. So which is better? Do I want a, a purple group on the third carbon or a propyl group on the fifth carbon? Well, I'd rather have a propyl group on the third carbon. And so by that logic, we're going to actually um, start numbering the chain going downwards. So the purple path is the way you should be doing, right? All right, so we have a three propyl, 
We have a three propyl, and uh, that's seven, so it's going to be hept dash. We have a triple bond at one, and then a triple bond at six, and so that is di dine, right? Okay, so that's a three propyl hept one six diine, right? So make sure that your parent chain always includes both triple bonds or all all of your triple bonds should be on the the parent carbon the parent chain I mean and so I'd rather go this way because that gives me a 3 methyl uh, going this way gives me a 5 methyl and I'd rather have a 3 methyl than a 5 methyl now for this one it looks pretty complicated but it's not you know uh, whenever you have a triple bond you gotta start numbering at the triple bond first if there's nothing else right if there were an, if there were an alcohol then um, you would start numbering at the alcohol. In this case, there's only a triple bond, so we start numbering at the triple bond first. So we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Right. So notice that there's a a, a propyl group on the fourth carbon. So that's one, two, and three carbons. So that's a propyl. So we have propyl group. And we also have one, two, three, and four, so that's a butyl group. All right, so four butyl, and then four ethyl. So which is which comes first? Well, I'd rather say four butyl because the B has more alphabetical priority over the E in ethyl. So we will say that this is a, a four butyl, four butyl, four butyl, uh, four ethyl. Now notice that I didn't put 4,4-butyl-ethyl because a butyl is different from an ethyl, right? You only do 4,4 four, four if it's two of the same things, and then you put di. So we have a 4-butyl-4-ethyl, and anything else? No? Okay, uh, so now we put, what? You could put 2 decine, right? You could put 2 decine, or you can also put... Um, you can also put, oh, I'm sorry, this is not an ethyl, right? This is not an ethyl. This is actually a, uh, a propyl. Sorry, so uh, let me change that really quick. So because that's three carbons, it's going to be a propyl. You can also say uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. You have uh, dec 2 ein, right? So you can do 4-butyl, four 4-propyl, four dec 2 ein, or you could say 4-butyl, four 4-propyl, uh, two decine. It's the same thing. Uh, just realize they have to start counting at the triple bond and do your longest chain, right? In this case, the triple bond was at the top, so we numbered it going this way, right? Going that way. And that gave us the longest chain, which was 10, so it's decane, but there's a triple bond, so it's ein. The triple bond occurred between 2 and 3, so we say 2. That gives us 2 decine. Now we're going to number closest to the uh, carbon chain, the, the triple bond, I mean. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so no matter where we go, it's going to be the same one. So let's do it like this, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, and 6. So that gives us a 2, six, uh, two, five. Two, 5. There's a methyl group on the 2 in, fi in fifth carbon, so that's 2, 5, uh, dimethyl dimethyl uh, hex hex 3 ein right so hex 3 ein 2 5 dimethyl hex 3 ein for this one it doesn't matter if you go left or right like if you don't if you do 1 2 3 uh, 4 5 and 6 or let's see 4 sorry 4 five, six, and seven. And if you go with the blue path, it's gonna be the same thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have a triple bond for the purple at two, and there's a triple bond at five. And for the purple one is going to be, or sorry, and for the blue one is gonna be two and five. So no matter what, we're gonna have a double bond, a triple bond at two and five. So it's gonna be the same thing. We will say that this is a, a two, 
sorry. Uh, we also, it's important to know that we have uh, two methyl groups on the fourth carbon. So we can have four, four uh, dimethyl, dimethyl, um, dimethyl, hapt, hapt, and then two, five, uh, di, ein, right? So four, four dimethyl, hapt, two, five, di, ein, di, ein. So I hope this video helped you. I know it's really long and, um, you know, you could break this video into multiple parts, but I hope this video helps you. I hope you do well on nomenclature, uh, knowing that you basically mastered most of it, right? You got to do a little bit more practice problems, but you'll be fine. And um, you'll do amazing on your exam. So I have a lot of faith in you and I hope you do well. Give me cool. Okay, so, you know, go out there and have a lot of fun, probably doing something else than organic chemistry. But I believe in you, and thank you for watching. Of course, if you have any questions, you know, don't ask me, because I don't know anything, right? So, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.